Good afternoon to you. 306 here, News Talk 105.9 WMAL, where we are making sense of the news. Coming up on the program, Lee Zeldin, the former congressman from New York, joins us this hour at 3.30. We talked to him about Joe Biden's clumsy response to all of the left-wing radicalism on college campuses everywhere and his decision to withhold congressionally approved aid to Israel just so he can win in Michigan? Isn't that an impeachable offense? Lee Zeldin will weigh in on that coming up. Ken Cuccinelli here with us at 5 o'clock today. We talk election transparency and election integrity with him. Get a report update on that subject. It's an important one. And Rebecca Koffler is here at 5.30. She's the author of Putin's Playbook. She'll give us uh, an update on what's happening between Russia and Ukraine and the sheer loss of life there and the American involvement in that war. You can join us at 888-630-9625, 888-630-WMAL. Arrests overnight at George Washington University, an encampment that had stretched on for far too long as uh, these commies on campus were literally chanting for the guillotine for college administrators. That was a week ago that that was taking place, and uh, nobody could marshal any sort of effort whatsoever to yank these idiots off of campus. And finally, finally, last night, all of a sudden, D.C. Metro Police move in and begin arresting everybody after giving them countless warnings, countless warnings that they need to go. In fact, here's some of the sound from last night. Of the Metropolitan Police Department. If you are currently on George Washington University property, you're in violation of D.C. Code 22-330. And they, look, they had spent the whole week vandalizing every statue of George Washington they could get their hands on. They're spray painting everything. Uh, they were projecting images of flames and and stuff like down with the colonizers all over an American flag that had been hung from a nearby building uh, as a, basically a way to say, knock it off. Like, this is a pro. This should be a pro-American campus. It's an ad- named after our country's first president, uh, George Washington. And uh, that's, you know, it was just just nonstop chaos uh, for these past few weeks. And uh, the cops come in and they finally start issuing these long overdue warnings. Yeah, the, the, of course, the, the loudspeaker announcements, the courtesy call like, hey, get out of here or else you'll be arrested. Uh, and uh, here are some of the protesters. They're they're filming the police officers. They're acting like they're in the middle of a war zone. They're oh here they come! Like it's like you know they're it's three hundred and they're trying to they're stop the onslaught. It's like no, they're cops. They're enforcing the law, which you've been breaking routinely. At least over a hundred cops. Everybody. At least, at the very least, a hundred cops. Look at this, everyone. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Can you believe they're enforcing the law? I thought we were going to be able to live in this in this totally crazy, crazy world where there's no laws, no rules, nothing. Just pure anarchy from now on. Wake up. Wake up. Look at this. Wake up, sleepyheads. Look at this. Full, full gear. Full gear. They're ready. They're all ready, y'all. They got their drums. They're ready. They're ready. Not exactly the drums of war. These guys barely can hold the drums. We knew this was coming. We knew this was coming. Yeah, well, it's long overdue. We weren't sure if it was coming. You know more than we did because we were under the impression that it was never going to happen. The D.C. mayor, Muriel Bowser, not telling the cops to go in there. Uh, We're just going to let another aspect of D.C. be destroyed. Let's see if these kids get all tuckered out, wrecking everything. Oh, that didn't work. We got to, we have to send the cops in. More on that in a moment and why Muriel Bowser seemed to do this last night. We're literally surrounded. We're surrounded. We're surrounded. It's 3.18 a.m. Uh-huh. 3.18 a.m. We should be sleeping in the grass right now. Over 100 cops. Over 100. And everything about it, it's also theatrical, right? Are these all theater majors, all of them? So this is, you know, all these kids, they're young adults. All these young adults out there, all across the country, they're pretending like they're refugees. Like, 
that they're starving, that they're, that there's tyranny coming for them, that everybody's being mean to them, that they're staring down the man. You know, if they would even acknowledge the reality of Tiananmen Square, which they don't, they would pretend like they were Tank Man, that they were standing there, here come the tanks! No, there's just cops to remove you morons and just get you out of there. And there's not going to be meaningful consequences for you. The, the worst that's going to happen is you're going to have a little pepper spray in your face, which uh, I don't Am I supposed to derive joy from stuff like this? It, it did make me laugh out loud. I, I watched this morning uh, the video. Protesters at GW. They, they, <laughs> the cops. The cops, they've got these, these canisters of pepper spray. It's almost, it's like bear spray. They, they shoot at a huge range. It's, it's just a stream of pepper spray going out uh, across the eyeballs of these idiots who've been there wrecking everything. Uh, and here's what it sounded like. You know, I love how sometimes at these commie rallies, somebody yells medic, like there's an actual medic kind of come running across the battlefield or something. Medic! They'll scream. Somebody comes running with a little cup of milk. I've got some milk for your eyeballs. And they pour, put them on the ground. It's so stupid. The whole thing. You, you know, this didn't have to happen. You didn't have to take pepper spray to the eyeballs. This could have all been avoided. You're not going to starve to death inside of that hall in Columbia. Go to McDonald's. It's like four feet away. And plus, you get the benefit of not having the cops put you in a chokehold and drag you out. That's, you know, there's a lot of upside to, to not breaking the law here. Not being lunatics, supporting terrorism. There's, there's a tremendous, there's a, it's very bright on the side of decency and order. Um, yeah, uh, over at Fox 5, they had a reporter uh, on uh, what it looked like there at the encampment after the cops cleared it out. We're just standing here and watching the, the cleaning of the street. It appears that they're bringing in the large hoses and they're trying to spray down uh, some of the, the hippies? street, H Street area where people had... Oh, no, they're cleaning off the street because it's a mess. It's a total mess. Once again, um, it is not the right that creates messes and litters everything. In fact, I don't know anybody who's conservative who actually litters or destroys the environment. They're they're clean people. Conservatives are clean, well-adjusted, thoughtful, empathetic people. How many rallies have you seen, right? When you get a conservative rally on the National Mall, people show up. It's like millions of Roombas. Like they leave and everything is spotless. How'd that happen? How is it cleaner than before the rally started? And that's happened through the years. I've, I can't tell you the number of conservative rallies I've seen uh, right here in the nation's capital. And every time it's always cleaner. It's always cleaner. People take all their trash away and it's a lot better. Not true with the left. The left leaves filth everywhere. Just disgusting litter and filth. And they and they uh, create policies that abide it. You know what's happening on our border right now? You know what Biden has done to our border? Not only are people pouring across it, there's trash everywhere. Just, just filth everywhere that you have masses of humanity flowing through. And that's all, of course, underwritten by you, the American taxpayer. And the same is true of all of these encampments. Every time they clear, they clear one up at Columbia. Filth, disgusting. It smells bad, and uh, it's uh, it's awful. So GW, same deal. Fox Five covering the the wreckage left behind by these lefties. Spray down uh, some of the street H Street area where people had camped for a long time. Um, it was getting kind of kind of gross in there. There were a lot of people, a lot of trash, um, and I know that there had been reports of rats running around as well. So uh, they're trying to return this back to uh, University Yard and, and open it back up to the U university and and its community. <laughs> Again, long over. Finally, at the end of the school year. <laughs> oh, you've opened it back up. Oh, good. Just in time. Just in time. Uh, this one's not this this piece of audio is not from GW. It's from Princeton, but it's it's par for the course uh, for the types of people who are out there. Um, they uh, they're fragile to say the least. This is absolutely unfair. My peers and I, we are starving. We are physically exhausted. I am quite literally shaking right now, as you can see. We are starving. We're physically exalt exhausted. We are shaking. <laughs> Why are you shaking? Why are you physically exhausted? Why are you literally shaking? You're starving in America? You're at Princeton. How are you starving? Come on, be I'm starving. Be serious. We are physically exhausted. I am quite literally shaking right now, as you can see. We are both cold and hot at the same time. We are all immunocompromised. What? All of them? 
Every single one is immunocompromised? <laughs> oh, they definitely have a brain condition. And based on the university's meeting yesterday with some of our bargaining team, they would love to continue physically weakening us because- Wait, did she say marketing team? Or is it bargaining team? What was the phrase she just used? What, what kind of teams do these people have? The immunocompromised people? And based on the university's meeting yesterday with some of our bargaining team- Bargaining. They would love to continue physically weakening Physically weakening you? What are you talking? Are they chaining you to radiators and, and not letting you eat food and you can't move and so you're so emaciated? This, none of this is happening. This is all in your head, sweetheart. This is all in your head. And this can be resolved. Just follow these nice men to this truck and they're going to take you to a place with padded walls. It's super comfy and you're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah! <laughs> the drums. They think they're in a tribe or something. They think that they're they're villagers. They're banging on their drums. I truly do not feel like I'm doing anything special. This is my choice, and I would not spend my birthday doing anything other than being- It's also her birthday. She just wanted to be really clear, just so everybody knows. It's my birthday today. Just in case it wasn't clear that this is all a big narcissistic exercise. I'm here and standing in solidarity with you all, and standing in solidarity with our siblings and innocent people in Gaza. How does she feel about Hamas? No matter how physically weak we may, we may be, united we have never been stronger. Our resolve has never been stronger. Physically weak. What are they even talking about? I, I mean, obviously, as I've been mentioning, physical weakness is sort of a feature of uh, many of the people who've been showing up. But that's that was a personal choice. They haven't been working on that particular stat. Uh, now, why did this happen today? Why did, uh, no, that's not, that was Princeton, but why did GW finally have uh, the cops come in and clear out the encampment? Well, the answer appears to be that there was supposed to be a House Oversight Committee hearing today where Muriel Bowser, the mayor of the city, was going to be hauled in to answer questions to Congress, which technically oversees the district, about why this encampment's been allowed to continue at GW. Why all of this chaos, the destruction, the defacing of the statues, why does that continue? And so the hearing set for today, well, it's not taking place now. So a couple of things have happened. Cops move in last night ahead of the hearing. They get rid of everybody. And all of a sudden this morning, James Comer, the head of the oversight committee, he puts out a statement that says, following the Metropolitan Police Department finally clearing out the unlawful encampment on GW's campus, I am very pleased to announce that the hearing with D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser has been canceled. GOP oversight will continue to hold D.C. officials accountable. Wait a second. Hold on a second. Here's my question today. Why did you cancel the hearing? Because they eventually cleared out the encampment just ahead of the congressional hearing? Hell, now I want to know more. Give us a sense of the decision-making process here. Why did it take a congressional he hearing to induce you to restore order at a, at a university in the nation's capital? Why did that happen? Are you going to continue doing that? What changes are you going to make to make this city safer? Why is there so much chaos on your watch? Whose decision was it? Was it you, Muriel Bowser, to hold off the cops and stop them from going in in the first place? Why did you do that? Any number of questions. But Republicans on the Oversight Committee today, unfortunately, and I don't actually know their reasoning. I'm not sure what it is. I'm, I'm, one would assume, if, if, as you measure politics and you get used to seeing things like this, you start to think, okay, there must be some behind, some out-of-sight deal that, that we're not aware of that led to this. But why would you cancel the hearing? The nation's capital has been in chaos as a result of the decisions of the nation's capital's leadership, which includes the mayor of the city, and your opportunity to question her was about to present itself today and you say because she did something in order to foreclose on your criticisms of her now she's not going to be there for a hearing what is that what in the world is that we'll keep exploring it more of your calls in a moment it's all right so gw university finally getting some relief last night as dc metro police go in and clear out the lunatic commie encampment that was wreaking so much havoc after way too long remember they were they wanted to guillotine the entire administration last week. They were chanting about it brazenly. Nobody sought to stop them until now. 
just ahead of a scheduled hearing for Muriel Bowser Day on the Capitol, which then instantly got canceled by the House Oversight Committee. What was that about? Why did they cancel it? You let Muriel Bowser slip away. Donna, Frederick, line four. Donna, good afternoon. You're on the Vince Colony Show. Hi, good afternoon. I remember the days when uh, Muriel Bowser uh, allowed these, and I call these anti-American revolutionaries because that's who they actually are. And I think it's about darn time people started acknowledging that. But they were painting the streets of D.C., defund the police. They're anti-police. They're anti-America. Uh, they they hate their citizenry. I mean, it's time for people in D.C. and everywhere else to get real about what's actually going on. And they're the same and people, Donna, what you just said. About it. What you just said, they're all the same okay. people. The, the defund the police movement, uh, all of that. Yeah. And that now what we're seeing, uh, the, like kind of the lefty sort of anti-Israel commies that are on campus, they're all the same people. And uh, th there's yeah. a reason. They're all wearing the COVID masks. It's an identifiable uniform. They all act the same way. They use umbrellas to block cameras. It's Antifa. It's... It's all the same thing over and over and over again. And you're right. Muriel Bowser coddled them. She coddled them. She tried to have it both ways. She claimed that she was fighting to sustain policing in the district, even though, you know, the police force has been absolutely savaged by the city council. Uh, there's nobody enforcing the laws. The prosecutors aren't helping. The judges aren't helping. They're springing these violent criminals back onto the street all the time. And then she comes along and she says, Sure. I'll tell you what, I'll pay the ransom. I'll paint Black Lives Matter on the street leading up to the White House. And she did that. And what has it gotten the district, Donna? How much better has the district become since then? Uh, it's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. And so when you have the opportunity to haul the mayor in, you do it. And Republicans didn't today. So we'll keep our eyes on that. A former congressman, Lee Zeldin, joins us next. We'll talk to him about this commie movement all across the country and Joe Biden's decision to withhold aid from an ally to gain a political advantage in November. That's impeachable. Good afternoon to you. 335 here. News Talk 105.9 WMAL. We're, me we're making sense of the news. You can join us. 888-630-9625. 888-630-WMAL. Also on the program, Ken Cuccinelli is coming up at five o'clock. We talk Election integrity efforts from him. We'll get the update on that report card. And then we talk Russia, Ukraine with Rebecca Koffler at 530. You can join us at 888-630-9625. All right, let's see. You know, Joe Biden, it is now confirmed, has been withholding aid to Israel of late in an effort, quite obviously, to win votes in Michigan to distort the election, to affect the election. ABC News uh, reports Biden withheld bomb shipment to Israel out of fear it could be used in Rafah. According to their sources, the Biden administration opted to pause a shipment of some 3,500 bombs to Israel last week because of concerns the weapons could be used in Rafah, where more than one million civilians are sheltering with nowhere else to go, according to the senior administration official. Other weapon transfers from the U.S. to Israel, including the sale of JDAM's Joint Direct Attack Munition, are being closely scrutinized as a part of a larger review of U.S. military aid to Israel that began last April, the official said. So uh, a, a shot across Israel's bow. You better help Biden politically or else no more aid for you. Uh, here to respond to this and all of the craziness across the country, Lee Zeldin is here, former congressman from New York. Uh, he joins us on the phone. Hello, sir. Good to have you with us. No, it's great to be with you. This is uh, so I've, I've seen other people make this remark. I'll make it here. Uh, this seems like the kind of thing that they claim they impeach Trump over. I'm old enough to remember having to sit inside of Adam Schiff's smelly bunker at the basement of the Capitol for deposition after deposition after deposition trying to uh, take down President Trump. Um, and I'm proud to be part of his impeachment defense team. And that the premise of their case was built upon uh, words that were expressed regarding aid to Ukraine uh, being withheld. And without getting into the merits of what happened back in 2019, because there were plenty of flaws uh, in that case, and no one's talking about you know an impeachment coming down tomorrow for Joe Biden. This, you know, it's, it, 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 you go further than that and just look at what's been done through legislative action recently. This money was appropriated 
without conditions like this. Uh, And this was part of the debate, whether or not the funding should be conditional. And when Congress appropriates the funds and makes the strategic policy decision, then the the president of the United States shouldn't, for his own political calculation, because he's trying to win Michigan, do uh, his own act against congressional intent. Well, Joe Biden made a decision on that legislation when he signed it into law. That was he, he could have vetoed it. He could have sent it back to Congress. He didn't. Uh, he signed it into law. And here he is trying to change the terms because it seems obvious to me that it's political. Is there any question that it is? Congressman? I, I, I lost you for a split second. No, that's OK. I was asking, do you, is there any question in your mind that this is uh, an effort to meddle in the election by Joe Biden? This so President Biden has for a long time been uh, speaking, I've been going back years as it relates to U.S. Israel policy as somebody who proudly considered himself a friend and supporter of of Israel. And post October 7th, he instantly came out with comments that showed that he that he understood how bad it was what took place on October 7th, right. recognizing the Israeli inherent right of self-defense and saying that Israel is going to have to defeat Hamas. The calculation change was made because of an uncommitted vote that came out of a Democratic primary in Michigan. This is about polling and seeing an erosion in their base of support. There is no doubt in my mind based off the way President Biden had always been acting as it relates to U.S.-Israel policy, that this shift is because of politics. End of story. Yeah, and, and you know, the, he, he's been claiming that it's, it's, up to, it's Israel's right to defend itself. I mean, as you're pointing out, he has, at least in the past, uh, a majority of people in Israel support their military operations to take out Hamas in light of the terror attack on October 7th. Uh, Israel is now beginning the process of going into Rafah. They're warning civilians in the region that they need to evacuate elsewhere. Uh, and even telling them where to go as, as they do that. They're dropping leaflets in advance of a full-scale uh, attack on, on Hamas there. And it's at this moment that the Biden administration seems to be saying, no, you're not allowed to finish off your enemy. What's that about? Uh, well, it's about pandering, catering to uh, a an activist base of their uh, of, of President Biden and Democrat support that he, that they are fearful of. Uh, Rashida Tlaib, uh, activating not just uh, people who agree with her in Dearborn, Michigan, but elsewhere around the state and the country. Uh, this is something that they see as a big issue that I'm sure will be playing out when they're getting to their national convention this summer in Chicago. They see the impact that's possible when folks start voting uh, come this fall, and they want to stop the bleeding. But the problem is the way that they are trying to stop the bleeding is only going to cause them to be bleeding out of another place because there's a lot of people who are unhappy with this particular shift, yeah. with them not wanting to do the right thing. And the last thing, by the way, is when he staffed up the White House, he did put people in his administration who believe that the policy of the Biden administration should be going after Israel, who supported the Iran nuclear deal, who believe that, yeah, by the way, I mean, there's a there's a base of anti-Semitism that is emerging and growing uh, within their party. Uh, they, they decided that they aren't going to aggressively try to root this out. Instead, at times they're silent, which elevates, embraces it, empowers it. Other times, like we're seeing now, they actually have policy changes because of it. I'm glad you brought up the, the role of their softness on Iran because they have uh, the Biden administration has indeed uh, freed up billions upon billions of dollars for the Iranian regime, which, of course, leads to uh, more terror attacks. So Hamas gets their money from Iran. Uh, in other words, uh, the unfortunately, the decisions by the Biden administration in c- terms of coddling Iran only made that October 7th attack on Israel possible in terms of in terms of the funding and their ability to, to execute that mission. And so it, 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 it you know, the Biden administration clearly has culpability uh, in all of this that nobody's really willing to acknowledge, Congressman. Congressman Zeldin? Sorry, I think our signal is a little shaky uh, right now. Congressman, you still with me? 
I, I got you. Do you have me? Yes, I have you now. Go ahead. I'm sorry on, about that. On, on September 11th, 2023, just weeks before October 7th, they released billions of dollars uh, to Iran. So th- this wasn't something that you know, we're talking about years ago or even months before. We're talking about just a few weeks before October 7th, they make the, dec- the decision to provide billions of dollars. And it has flashbacks to when Obama was in the White House and Joe Biden was the vice president when they were sending pallets full of cash right. to Iran and paying for Yes. Yeah, we've, we've seen this before. Uh, you know, Hamas, for their part, uh, Congressman, have uh, they've been cheering on what they're seeing on college campuses all across the United States of America these past few weeks. Uh, as we get a lot of chaos, a lot of destruction, people chanting death to America uh, and uh, from the river to the sea, obviously, the eradication of Israel being the implication of that phrase. Uh, and, it, you know, as you watch what's happening on these college campuses, uh, what do we need to know about this? What what are you seeing, sir? Well, you see some presidents who have handled it correctly, where as soon as it starts, if they say you have to be out by two o'clock the next day or you're suspended, if they're not out by two o'clock the next day, the students get suspended. They get arrested. There are other college presidents who pander to it. They said, you know, like we saw in Columbia, you have to be out by two o'clock the next day. Two a one, they're not out. There's no consequences. You have some elected officials who knew right away. We saw from Abbott in Texas or DeSantis in Florida, where they they stepped in and said this is unacceptable, and they weren't going to just sit back and allow this to play out. And then you have other states like in New York, where Kathy Hochul was asked. What are you going to do about it? Would you call the National Guard? How is the state going to step in? And they're like, well, this is not our problem. This is something that the university presidents need to deal with themselves. Uh, there is a, a system inside of the Democratic Party on the left where they are organized to disrupt, to destroy, uh, to go against values. Uh, this is something that we saw play out during the, the, the BLM riots. We see it playing out right now. I think that there needs to be more talk about who's funding it, how it's organized, because yes. we know it's going to happen again. And the next time that we have you know, the F- FBI director going to speak to some congressional committee testimony about, about what. Hmm. That's the, about, Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. I, we're all watching. Congressman, you, I don't know what it is. I, your signal just keeps breaking up. So I, I tell you what, I think we'll have to have you back for another time, hopefully with a stronger signal. Uh, uh, there's something just getting in the way of your remarks today. It's so, it's so unfortunate. But Congressman Lee Zeldin, uh, thank you very much for stopping by today. I really appreciate your conversation. All right. And he's off. All right. So uh, that's it. I, uh, uh, that's always very frustrating. You know, you know, we. Uh, we live in an age of such amazing technology, and sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, but he's right, though, about tapping into the funding sources. That's a that's a critical element of all of this, uh, just looking uh, very closely at who's funding all of this. And, you know, there has been some amazing work done on that question by uh, conservative media. That's been huge, and that they've been all over this. Uh, whether it's the Washington Examiner, the Daily Caller, the Washington Free Beacon, uh, just endless coverage of, hey, who's funding all these lefty groups? And, of course, it's going to be those billionaires that you that you recognize uh, over and over, the George Soroses of the world. We were talking earlier this week with uh, Scott Walter, who just wrote a great book on Arabella Advisors, which is it's it's kind of the uh, the Legion of Doom for all of these lefties. They all, they all assemble, and then they direct all of this funding to— uh, so many uh, awful things. And uh, this week, there was a piece in Tablet Magazine uh, this week, Just and uh, it, it does a really nice job stitching together everything we know. It's uh, it's called The People Setting America on Fire. That's the, the headline on the piece. And, you know, now that we've, we've lost Congressman Zeldin, I, I, maybe I'll take a second and just share some of this with you because— This will get to the point that he was trying to make. He says, over the past several weeks, Americans have witnessed what has seemed like a mass outpouring of support for terror on elite college campuses at Columbia, Yale, Princeton, NYU, UCLA, Northwestern, Texas, and elsewhere. We've had masked mobs occupy schools with tent encampments established 
self-proclaimed autonomous zones. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? That's a 2020 thing. Clashed with police. That's a 2020 thing. Harassed and threatened visibly Jewish students. Yeah, oh yeah, like bigotry. That's a 2020 thing. Issued demands for their universities to divest from Israeli genocide. Genocide. Also, the ignorance here is a 2020 thing. It's a, it's a feature of the left, these commies. Politically, moreover, the protests have displayed an incoherent mix of campus progressivism, hardcore Islamism, and Arab nationalism, and revolutionary anarchism and communism, including open praise for North Korea. Well, how did that happen? How does that, what, is, what does open praise for North Korea have to do with any of this? The only unifying thread would appear to be opposition to Israel and its alleged imperial patron, the United States. Have America's college students suddenly converted en masse to anarcho-communist jihadism? Not quite. Many are far left and they're anti-Israel. Some are foreigners or the children of foreigners who have imported the conspiracies and hatreds of their homelands. More, more admitted under relaxed pandemic era admission standards and proudly ignorant of both American and world history are taking the, quote, decolonial half-knowledge pushed by their elders to its logical conclusion. That's what, this is one of the things, that, that's, a, that's a great observation. This, uh, these useful idiots, they, they ingest some of this neo-Marxism just enough that they then take it and apply it to everything that they say. What, they, this is why they think America's bad. They think Ameri of America as colonizers. You live on stolen land. You should be ashamed of your country. Give it back. To whom? What are you talking about? It doesn't matter that it's incoherent. The, that incoherent worldview is applied to everything, from America to Israel, Western civilization. So they go on here. How, how is this all happening? It's politically and financially supported by a vast web of progressive nonprofits, NGOs, foundations, and dark money groups ultimately backed by big money, big money donors al aligned with the Democrat Party, uh, they write. And uh, there's a lot. They say there's, there's all sorts of these groups, um, you know, Occupy, Black Lives Matter, Stop Cop City. Uh, they go down the list over time and how they, they keep being funded by all of the, uh, the same organizations. They operate in a decentralized manner. They write in Tablet Magazine. They use successful tactics drawn from decades of anarchist organizing and spread through left-wing activist networks via word of mouth, as well as through formal trainings by professionals or uh, uh, movement incubators like Momentum Strategies is the name of it. Yeah, the funding for all of this chaos from places like the Rockefeller Brothers Fund, the Ford Foundation, the Tides Foundation. Tabla Magazine writes this week about all of these crazy pro-terror campus events. They say Tides, the Tides Foundation, you might have noticed, is a name that keeps coming up again and again. The Tides Nexus, of which the Tides Foundation is a part, is one of the largest progressive dark money networks in the country. They control upward of a billion dollars in assets. It's a list of major donors... That's an all-star cast of left-wing billionaires and foundations that includes George Soros, Peter Buffett and his Novo Foundation, eBay founder Pierre Omidyar, the Rockefeller Brothers Fund, the Ford Foundation, and the New Venture Fund, which is controlled by another Democrat dark money powerhouse, Eric Kessler's Arabella Advisors, a pioneer of what critics have called charitable money laundering through the use of fiscal sponsorships to obscure money trails through multiple layers of bureaucracy, Tides, through its donations and fiscal sponsorships, has emerged as a major backer of the anti-Israel protest movement all across the country. In fact, they point out more than any of the dark money giants on the left, Tides, the Tides Foundation, has become tightly integrated with the ascendant Obama faction of the Democrat Party. And they go on pointing out that all these board members are all Obama people. In case you're wondering, is there an Obama link to all of the madness? Yeah, they all work for the groups that are financing all of this. You should know that. It's a great piece in Tablet Magazine this week. All right, coming up, I've got some details. Trump's having a good week in court. I'll give you some, some updates on that breaking news today. Ken Cuccinelli is going to join us. Rebecca Koffler, stay here.